Hello, my name is Dr. Ali Pratani, the lead author for the chapter on reducing the risk of developing diabetes for the 2018 Clinical Practice Guidelines for Diabetes Canada. The co-authors are Dr. Harpreet Bajaj, Dr. Ronald Goldenberg, and Ms. Yvonne Mullen. The key changes for 2018 are the following. Number one, reinforcement of the role of healthy behavior interventions, including moderate weight loss and regular physical activity in reducing the risk of type 2 diabetes mellitus in individuals with prediabetes. Number two, new information on the role of certain dietary patterns in reducing the risk of type 2 diabetes mellitus. Three trials have shown that there is no safe and effective strategy to prevent type 1 diabetes mellitus at this time. An alternate strategy is to use immunosuppression or immunomodulation at the time of diagnosis, but this is associated with significant side effects and ethical considerations. Type 1 diabetes mellitus is a chronic autoimmune condition with destruction of the pancreatic beta cells. A large meta-analysis by Esposito and colleagues has shown that several healthy diets, including Mediterranean, DASH, and AHEI, were associated with a 20% reduction in the risk of developing future type 2 diabetes mellitus. In the Diabetes Prevention Program study, about 3,000 pre-diabetic persons were randomly assigned to placebo, metformin, or a lifestyle modification program with the goals of at least a 7% weight loss and at least 150 minutes of physical activity per week. The mean age was 51 years old and the mean body mass index was 34. Average follow-up was roughly 2.8 years. Compared to placebo, the lifestyle intervention reduced the risk of diabetes by 58% and metformin reduced the risk by 31%. Of developing type 2 diabetes mellitus. The lifestyle intervention was significantly more effective than metformin. In addition to metformin, acarbose has also been shown to reduce the risk of progression to diabetes by roughly 30% in the STOP NIDM study. Based on the evidence, in individuals with prediabetes, the following recommendations can be made. Recommendation number one. In individuals with prediabetes, a structured program of healthy behavior interventions that include moderate weight loss and regular physical activity of at least 150 minutes per week over five days a week should be implemented to reduce. Recommendation number two. In individuals at risk for type 2 diabetes, dietary patterns may be used to reduce the risk of diabetes, including the following. Mediterranean style, DASH, also known as dietary approaches to so stop hypertension, and AHEI, also known as alternate healthy eating index diet. Recommendation number three. In individuals with prediabetes, pharmacological therapy with metformin may be used to reduce the risk of developing type 2 diabetes mellitus. Now, I will go on to the key messages. As safe and effective preventative strategies for type 1 diabetes have not yet been identified, any attempts to prevent type 1 diabetes should be undertaken only within the confines of formal intensive and structured healthy behavior interventions, ideally resulting in loss of approximately 5% of initial body weight can reduce the risk of progression from impaired fasting glucose or impaired glucose tolerance to type 2 diabetes by almost 60%. When initiated early, the effects of healthy behavior interventions are long-lasting. Progression from pre-diabetes to type 2 diabetes can also be reduced by pharmacological therapy with metformin, a roughly 30% reduction. 
with persistent benefits observed after more than 10 years of stopping treatment in the Key messages for people with diabetes. If you have prediabetes, healthy behavior changes that result in a loss of 5% of your initial body weight can delay or prevent type 2 diabetes mellitus from developing. A registered dietitian can educate you about dietary changes. Regular physical activity is also important to reduce your risk of diabetes. If healthy behavior changes are not enough to normalize your blood glucose, your healthcare provider may recommend that you use medication in addition to ongoing healthy behavior changes to manage your prediabetes. Please visit guidelines.diabetes.ca. Here, the new clinical practice guidelines will be posted. In addition, you will find lots of other helpful information to help you provide patient-centered diabetes care and chronic disease management. You can also download the Diabetes Canada app on the Apple Store or Google Play. Here, you will find interactive tools, videos, slides, and chapters from the clinical practice guidelines. In addition to guidelines.diabetes.ca for healthcare providers, there is also a website for people with diabetes, diabetes.ca. In addition, there is a phone number for more information at 1-800-BANTING or 1-800-226-8464.